Welcome back to Random Vlogs. Thank you everyone for sticking with my channel to watch all the videos. Introducing the latest bike, the 2021 BMW S 1000 R M Sport. Enjoy the video, don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already and leave a comment with what you would like to see next below. Today I'm going to be giving you an update on the BMW S 1000 R M Sport I've had from BMW for the last three months. I've done various track days on this machine, I've done road miles, I've done some modifications to it. It's time for a mid-term update on this amazing bike. I've been a little bit short on content on this machine, so it's about time I gave you a great big fat update with how I'm getting on with this bike. So sit back, strap yourselves in, get yourself a cuppa. So. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, the BMW S1000 R. M Sport as this one is. Now this isn't my bike. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is BMW UK's machine. This is my long-term test for the season basically. So I picked this bike up three months ago. So I've had this bike three months. I've done various track days with it. I've done road miles. I've modified it lightly as well. You know, so I've, 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 I've lived with this machine for three months now. So this is my mid-term update really of where I am with this bike, what I think to it. And then when I bought this, when I bought it, when I was lent this, I always had in mind, and as I have done in the past, every long-term bike I've had in the past, I've ended up buying. The GSX-R I had from Suzuki, the KTM 690 last year, and now this Double R this year. And I'm very close to saying I'm going to have this machine at the end of the year because I am absolutely loving this bike. I actually borrowed one of these last year to do, uh, I had it for two weeks to do, you know, a, a two week review of the machine and I said at the end of that that this is a sports tourer. <laughs> I said this, this is a sports bike but it's also a sports tourer. Now that was quite a claim and that's one of the reasons why I've actually got this this year because I wanted to prove that point. Is this really a sports tourer? And yes, it is incredibly comfortable. It is without question the most comfortable sports bike on the market. Without question. The riding position is very, very comfortable for a sports bike. You know, I'm not, I'm not talking about compared to a venture bike, but for a sports bike, this is very, very comfortable. The bars are quite close to you. The pegs aren't too ridiculous. You, know, you, you don't duck forward on it too much. Now I've done some mods to, we'll talk about the mods in a minute, because I've done a fair few mods to this bike to improve it, to make it a little more comfortable. So we'll do a walk around and I'll go through all the mods I've done to this. But out the box, these are incredibly comfortable. What I really love about it, the electronic suspension and I've mentioned this on other reviews and other comparisons what's brilliant about the electronic suspension on this is it has a massive range of adjustment between the road mode which is what I, I, I ride this bike mainly on the road just in road mode all the time because it really softens the suspension up takes that harshness out of it and then if you do want to go in dynamic or race mode the whole thing firms up and it's really you know, it has that real from soft to hard, there's a massive adjustment, a massive adjustment, and in the road mode, in the soft mode, well, it's it's still not really soft, but it's just comfortable. I mean, I've started just riding the bike all the time in road mode on the road. Either if I'm going for a bit of a spirited bit through some twisties, road mode is really fine for that, and uh, that's what I love about it. The suspension's comfortable. You've got all of the road-based comforts like the cruise control. Cruise control is essential on the sports bike. You can't live without cruise control on the sports bike. It's brilliant. I love it. And what I love about the BMW one, it's just one press and it's set, you know, so it's just really, really easy. The whole interface, the, the screen, the TFT, it's all so easy on this bike. You've also, of course, got the heated grips on this version as well so the integrated heated grips so all of those fantastic road-based comforts make a massive difference to the feel of the machine now, as a road bike and what is amazing with this and what i have really tested with this is that as a road bike it's brilliant but if you do want to do some track days 
it is phenomenal on track absolutely incredible on track i think one of the massive standout features with this bike is the electronics package the electronics on this i think are right they're one of the best out there they're one of the best out there even though this bike came out 2019 so i guess electronics are a couple of years old and bikes like the tuono you know the new 2021 tuono have a, have a newer electronics package than this i think these are as good as what is on the very very latest kit still i have never ever noticed this bike on track or on the road doing any sort of interference or, or dialing the bike back or hesitating when you're giving it throttle you do not know this bike has got electronics it sorts all of that out for you i think it, it just anticipates and oh, we've gone into reserve it just anticipates what's going to happen go away it anticipates what's going to happen and you never feel it holding back and, and limiting your progress it doesn't hesitate it doesn't doesn't make you know it doesn't cut the power it just makes it a little bit flatter sort of out the corners a little bit so this bike just feels a little bit flatter it's all you really notice with the electronics when in the road modes there's no adjustable traction control so you're not thinking oh do i want level four or do i want level five the roads are a little bit damp should I go to level seven? There's no adjustable electronics. It's dialed into the to the to the mode. Even in the dynamic or the race mode, there's still no way of adjusting the traction control. But I, I don't think that matters because it just sorts it all out for you. And it's one less thing to worry about. You just ride the bike. And I like that. I've got a lot of time for that. If you are on track and you're really getting serious about lap times, it's got the pro mode. You go into the pro mode and you can then use the, the toggle on the switch gear here to go up and down traction you know one to eight how much traction you want anti wheelie on or off how much anti wheelie you want so you've got all that adjustment but only in the pro modes and i think that's the way to do it you don't need all that for the road for the road just let the bike sort it out for you and that's what this bike does so so well it just sorts it out for you right as the fuel lights on, let's talk about fuel consumption. Listen to that, that's the Pro Race exhaust burbling. So fuel consumption on this is pretty good. I think it's got a 17 litre tank or 16 and a half litres. I'll flash it on the screen. 17-ish litre tank. It can be a little bit awkward to find neutral sometimes. That's one slight criticism. But it's got, I think, a 16 half litre tank, full to the brim. You'll see about 150 miles out of that. It's, of course, it's got a fuel gauge. Of course, it's got a countdown until empty on the fuel. You know, about 150 miles. So fuel consumption isn't bad at all on this. You get around about 38, 39, even 40 miles per gallon. You can see on the road sometimes. So amazing. Also, I love the fact you've got a key. There's none of this keyless ignition nonsense. <laughs> you've got a key on this bike still. Oh, I don't want this one. I want the super. Only the best for my baby. Let's go to the super pump. Let's go for the ultimate. The ultimate petrol for the ultimate sports bike. Only seems right. Oh, I just poured it all over the pissing tank. God's sake, you hate it when it happens. 10 litres, 10 litres in, 15 quid out of the bank account. Jesus. Another nice feature which sounds like a silly thing, the hill hold control. This has even got hill hold control this. I keep boring all my mates with this. <laughs> I say, oh hill hold controls on. But what, what a practical thing, just to, when you're on a slight incline, it realises it's on an incline because it's got the IMU, and it just sticks the hill hold control and so you don't have to cover the brakes if you're on an incline. As soon as you pull let the clutch out, you know, or pull away or whatever, it just automatically turns off. Or you can double press on the, uh, see it's rolling back now, you can double press on the uh, brake lever, turn it on and off. Just a little, little road-based features like that, it's uh, lovely. So as you can tell, I'm uh, I'm loving this bike. I mean, it's even telling me because I've got the app, because I've got the app on my phone, the BMW app. It even tells you the speed limit of the road you're riding on. 
So this is a 60 limit here. Well, it's going into a 50 here, so let's see if that updates. It's going to go into a 50 in a second. Is it still? So yeah, 50. I better slow down, put the cruise control on, keep me at 50. But when you still, you know, oh, little things like that again. The speed, how, how often do you think, oh, what's the speed limit on this bit of road? I'm not sure. Tells you on the dashboard. And by the way, ignore the uh, the warning light on there. <laughs> ignore that, gloss over that. Now that's my own doing. I'll tell you why that's on in a minute when we do the walk around. To add to the road-based features, this also has turn-by-turn -turn navigation, you know, through your phone. And I've used it. Again, you need the app. Set your destination on the app. And then you'll get turn-by-turn uh, -turn navigation on the screen. And also, if you've got a headset like me, like the Cardo unit, it will tell you what to do at the next junctions and stuff as well. So turn-by-turn -turn navigation. I've used that many times, of course. I've also got the Ultimate Add-ons case as well, so I'll tell you about the mods and I'll tell you about how to fit that when I um, go through the mods I've done. USB power here, we'll talk about that in a minute. So the bike is very, very good. Very, very good. I mean, I say it's a sports tourer, it is still a sports bike, you know, the pegs are, are still high, you know, compared to an adventure bike or naked even, even compared to a naked, the pegs are high, you have got a bit of weight on your wrists. But I actually find this position, once you're used to it, pretty comfortable. I've done a, I've done a couple of hours stints on this bike without getting off. You know, I've, I've, I've ridden to Brands Hatch twice to do a track day and ridden home on this bike. And that's a two hour trip there, two hour trip back. It's comfortable, once you're used to this position, once you're initially on it, I actually find fatigue isn't too bad on it and you don't experience much fatigue on it. I've changed the seat. I, I thought again, this is about the mods. I've put on the non M Sport seat on this now, the standard seat, and it is much more comfortable than the M Sport seat. The only slight criticism I would say, it does put a little bit more weight on your wrist with the standard seat. Oh, there goes the Street Fighter boys. Go on then, I'm not in a hurry. It does put a little bit more weight on your wrist. <laughs> now the M Sport seat, because it push, it's quite a lot more padding in it, so it puts your bum a little bit higher, and then that throws a little bit more weight on your wrists, I'd say. So even though my bum is in perfect comfort, and I've never even had a sore ass on this bike, even after two hours in the saddle, it does put a little bit more weight on your wrists, I think, because it's a little bit thicker in the padding, but I think it's well worth it because the M Sport one is really, really hard. And let's listen to this pop. Oh, can you hear that? Listen. I do like that. This bike's got the Pro Race N can on it. And because this bike has so many cats, you know, the, 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 the main headers on this bike are so heavily restricted with cats for Euro 5, that even with like a real open exhaust on, it's not that loud, but you do just get a lovely little pop at the back. I, I did Brands Hatch last Wednesday, the evening session. I took it, went through noise testing, and had to rev the bike up to five and a half thousand revs, you know, static static noise test, and it was 97 dB. The guy said he, he couldn't believe it. He said, I can't believe you've passed, mate. I was expecting that to fail. I can't believe you've passed. And it was only 97 dB. He just said, watch the... Uh, watch the overrun, try not to get it to pop and bang too much. But apart from that, 97 dB, didn't even have the baffle in. Big open exhaust, I'll show it on the walk around, but no baffle, 97 dB. That's another thing I like about this bike. As a road bike, it's not too noisy. It's got the old valve in the exhaust, so, you know, when the bike is under five and a half thousand revs, or between five and a half thousand and six thousand revs, the valve is closed. So through town, like now, perfectly quiet, not noisy. So when you start up in the morning, it, it doesn't upset the neighbours. And then you go over five and a half thousand revs, even get around the corner without <laughs> touching the bars. Shouldn't really do that. But when you go over five and a half thousand revs, the, the valve opens and then it's, it's noisy. But if you're on the motorway at sort of 80, 85, the valves open and then you get a lot of volume then at like 85 and you've got that slight droning sort of sound because the valve is open at sort of a 
over over five and a half thousand revs, six thousand revs. So, um, but I really like the fact that this is so quiet. And if I bought this, I know what I'm like. I'm going to want to put a full system on it, especially as the stock system is so so ugly. There's no other word for it. It's so ugly. The standard headers on this bike, and they're not even covered standard. You know, you can you can see them all. So I probably want to go full system, but then I wouldn't want it too loud. And then you've got to worry about track day. So I don't know what to do if I buy this. I will go full system, but I don't want something ridiculously loud because I actually enjoy that this bike is nice and quiet when you want it to be. And then as soon as you give it full throttle, go over five and a half thousand revs, it all opens up. You've got that lovely inline four noise. The cruise control on this is also very, very good. As I said, it's all activated with one press, but there's no limitation on speed. So you can activate it at any speed in any gear and you can change gear with it on without it deactivating. Can I change down? No, you change down and it turns it off. But there's no, some bikes you've got to be in third gear and above, you've got to be over 30 miles an hour or 31 miles an hour, which is really annoying on the Aprilias. This will just work in any gear and you can even change up when you've got your cruise on as well. <laughs> practical, practical, you see. Ah, <sighs> settle down. Another thing I love about this bike, because it's got the shift cam, it's got a decent amount of bottom end as well. Compared to other sports bikes, other inline fours, let's say. This has got an amazing amount of bottom end grunt. It really has, because it has that adjustable cam profile. Ooh, I don't know why they didn't put that on the, uh, the single R really. It's a bit of an oversight, I think. I know they say it would have made the bike more expensive, having that added more weight, blah de blah, but it's great on this. It's great having that bottom end punch. I mean, it's not, it's not as punchy. <laughs> it's like Tuonos or the Super Nakeds, you know, it's not that punchy, but compared to like your CBR 1000 RR R's, it's got an incredible amount of grunt. And I've also think not only has it got the shift cam, which, which gives it that bit of grunt, but they've also geared this bike sensibly. It's not over geared, it's sensibly geared, which really helps as well. So it's time for that little part in the video where we do the walk around and here is the bike in all of its glory so let's just go through some of the mods i've done to this machine and why they've done why i've done them if you cast your mind back to my s1000r launch i managed to put a hole in the radiator <laughs> so that doesn't happen to this bike i've got some rng oil guards and also radiator guards so she's fully protected while we're talking about rng i've also fitted the rng tail tidy this tidies up the rear of the little bike a little bit now on the dashboard i do have a warning light which i mentioned that is because i've currently got no number plate light on the bike because to fit this rng kit you've got to cut the wires to your number plate light and wire in a new one because it isn't my bike i can't be cutting the standard loom so at the moment i've got no number plate light which is what that warning on the dash was bumblebees love it and it's well waxed look at him sliding around on there Go on sir, on your way. Other modifications which you've seen is of course the Pro Race exhaust. As I mentioned, 97 dB static tester brands hatch. That's without a baffle. And just look at the opening on this thing. This is basically just a straight through can. 97 dB because of all this integrated cat system we have here. That is the flapper I was telling you about. That's the flapper which basically makes the bike noisy or not. So when you're under 5,000, 5,500 revs, it uses this little bit of pipe, which is why it's so quiet, this little skinny bit, over 5,500 revs. This opens and you get the full pipe width. So that's why it's so quiet. One of the few things I don't like about the cosmetic look of this bike is the fact you can see all this exhaust underneath. It's not very attractive and you can get belly pans which cover this up in carbon. So if I buy this bike, which I think I might well do, I'll probably get a full system for it anyway and hope it's not too noisy, I don't know. Or I'll keep this one, but get a full carbon belly pan and cover up that exhaust. That's what I may do and then I can keep it quiet for the roads then. Other mods you've seen is of course the crash protection, GB Racing crash protection and their pucks. So that's sort of sensible protection really, especially if you're gonna be taking the bike on track. Other things I've done which I've mentioned is I have fitted carbon fiber fairing infills 
and carbon fiber tank shrouds. Now, standard, these look a little bit plasticky. This great big piece here is just normally like a not very attractive looking piece of plastic. I've now gone carbon fiber. I've gone a matte carbon fiber. I sort of wish I'd got um, shiny carbon. I'm not sure I like the matte now. It, now I've got it on the bike, but I went matte carbon. These are from Moto Composites. Now, a lot of these aftermarket fairing panels, these pieces here are normally like a separate bit of plastic which plugs into these panels and there's like a cut out. On these aftermarket panels, because it's quite complex, all the fittings where this plugs into, they just do this as one big piece of carbon. So this is just one big piece of carbon. I sent the two plastic pieces off to Christian at Crispy Designs and he made me a sticker to stick on to the carbon so it looks like you're using the factory um, infill panels because without this bit here it looks really weird just being all carbon it doesn't look right the lines of the bike don't look right so this is actually a sticker on top of the carbon fiber so if you've got one of these carbon infills here but don't like the fact that it's just too much carbon contact crispy designs and he'll be able to send you one of his sticker kits to stick on that factory stick on that bit of carbon and it just completes the bike Without that piece on there, it just doesn't look right. It's just too much black here. It just doesn't look right. And that little sticker kit just finishes it off. Other mods, as I've mentioned, I've fitted the standard seat. So this is the standard sport seat. There's more padding here. There's more padding all round, basically. The M Sport one, even though it doesn't look as nice, doesn't have the nice little logo, it is much more comfortable. I've also fitted some uh, Evo Easy Grip tank pads, guards. What I find with these bikes, to make them comfortable you have to really grip the bike with your legs so you really need some something to grip onto here i'm not overly happy with those clear covers so look they're a bit sort of smokers smokers yellow <laughs> i wish i'd got the black ones i thought they'd be a bit more invisible than that they've got a bit of a yellow tinge to them i'm not 100 percent happy i found the best solution for tank grips for this bike so if you know of a better tank grip let me know because I'm not 100% sold on those, if I'm honest. And on track, you absolutely need, need those to grip onto when you're hanging off the bike. So I prefer the look without that, but I'm not sure I like the smokers, the smokers yellow versions. I should have really got the black, I think. I fitted a darker screen. I fitted an MRA screen, um, just basically to make it look a bit better. I didn't, I was gonna get a bigger screen, but I, I, I think bigger screens just direct more air into your helmet. So you get more, that goes up higher, so you get more air just hitting your helmet. So I went for the standard height screen because uh, yeah, I've had that before with my uh, H2. It's just more air at your helmet if the screen isn't above your helmet line, you know? And I didn't want a massive great big screen, so it looks ridiculous. So I just wanted that sort of tinted look really. Um, it makes the front of the bike look much meaner with that dark screen. Did brands hatch on, on Monday night and I've sort of destroyed the standard uh, Metzlers now. These are the race techs. They've not done bad. They've done, I think now, 2,000 miles, but that includes two days at Snetterton, an evening session at Brands Hatch and the California Superbike School Level 2 at Brands Hatch. So they've done a little bit now. I was actually, I think Brands Hatch around around uh, Paddock, not Paddock here, was it Clearways? The final turn before the strut, I think it's Clearways, but you sat on the, that, that corner at sort of 120, giving it beans. It's just ripped chunks out of it. I did drop them down to 25 PSI, but still it's ripped chunks out of that tire. So they've actually worn down to the wear bar, wear bars on the, on the right hand side. The middle is fine. The left handers are fine, but because Brands Hatch is just such a right hand heavy, circuit it's just uh yeah major trauma to the tires on the right hand side and that is it really that is all the mods all i've done to the bike um, i've had no issues zero issues i've done 2000 miles on it now and i've had zero issues with this machine and it's done a lot of track work it's incredible it is incredible i do love her Ooh, i love you I'm bigging this bike up big time, aren't I? You want one yet? <laughs> it is very, very good. Downsides, there are a couple of little niggles I have with it, and they really are niggles. Probably the main one is the bike does run quite hot. It's a hot bike. It's nothing like 
some of the Ducatis, you know, the Panigale based V4s, it, it's not hot like that. But it's hot compared to the GSX-R, you know, it's, it's hot compared to a lot of other bikes. The frame gets quite hot to the touch, the fan comes on quite, they tend to run about 100 degrees, sort of is considered sort of normal running on these. So if I go into my vehicle, yeah, 100 degrees, it's running at 100 degrees right now. So they do run a little bit warm. So the fan will come on quite early and it will blow hot air at you. It's not really annoying, but it's just something I've noticed about these engines. And they've always done that. They've always been hot runners. Other downsides is there is a little bit of buzz from the through the bars. Now there always was on the S1000R, there is a little bit of buzz on the bars. I actually have bought some Evo Tech bar ends which are meant to be specifically weighted for this bike to minimise those vibrations. They should turn up next week. So I'm going to see if they make a big difference to the vibes. I mean I'm sort of used to it now, it's not that bad but it's just something again to mention. It's slight, the GSX R1000 is the same, it's a little bit buzzy. I think this is probably about the same as the GSX. I wouldn't say it was any worse, but it's just something to bear in mind, something to point out what I do really like. I always get confused which way you've got to twiddle the little whiz wheel here, but I really, really like the sports dash. If you're going on track, this dash is amazing with the lean angles. So when you turn the bike on, it remembers what lean angle you've done. So every time you turn the bike on and off, it resets the maximum lean angle. So I've done 39 degrees to the left, 35 to the right, already today since I've had the bike on. <laughs> or since I've filled up with fuel. So, you know, that dash is brilliant. You go on track with that and it is so good. It's so clear. I love just like, the dash on this bike is the best. I think it's the best dash you can buy. It's still the best dash you can buy look at it the layout of it the, just, just the quality of the dash is incredible on this and what it displays what it tells you zh2 it is the best dash in the business the best dash in the business gives you the brake pressures your dct intervention when i set the, when i go on track and i set the camera on here on the on the stem and you go for a session you can see you can see the lean angles you can see actually i could have been giving it more brake in that corner you can see how much brake pressure you've been applying how much intervention the traction control has been doing. That dash is incredible. I've toyed with getting a Super Naked, as you know, I keep mentioning Super Naked, should I buy one? And it's really, if I buy a Super Naked, I, I can't buy this. And, you know, I've tried all these bikes and when they've been in the garage, the one I've wanted to ride has been this. And it's because of that, I think I've decided I'm gonna buy this. Yeah, okay, these these aren't, you know, the B, it's a fantastic machine. It's so capable, it's got everything on it. It's comfortable. It is a little bit soulless. I mean, compared to an RSV4, you know, compared to a V-Twin, it, it is, it, BMW are brilliant. You know, it, it's like a work of art, but it is, you know, it's a tool, it's an incredibly good tool, but it is a little bit, you know, it's lacking that bit of flair, like some of the Italian bikes have. You know, it's BMW engineering at its best. It lacks a little bit of passion, perhaps, a little bit of flair, a little bit of je ne sais quoi. <laughs> but it's just such a damn good bike, I don't care that it's, uh, it could be considered a little bit sterile even. I don't care, it's just fantastic. So there you go guys, there is my mid-season update on the long-termer, the BMW S1000RR. I haven't finished with this bike yet. I've got a big mammoth trip planned to Cornwall on this. I'm doing a mammoth trip to Cornwall with Teapot One. He's gonna be on his GS, I'm gonna be on this, and I'm gonna prove, or attempt to prove, that this is a fantastic bike to munch miles. We've got a really, really long day in the saddle going to Cornwall. We're, we're doing other stuff. I'll, I'll tell you all about it a bit later, but uh, I've got some panniers coming for this from SW Motec, make some soft panniers. So I'm putting soft panniers on this and we're going on a little bit of a, a day out, an extended time in the saddle. Bruce is involved. 
You know if Bruce is involved, it's going to turn into an endurance adventure. <laughs> and it looks like it is, so that's to come. Oh, I could do that all day. What has she done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! Listen to this. Never mind getting beard up. Give me this any day of the week. Oh, <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video as much as we did. Like it and leave a comment below with what you would like us to do next. Till next time, stay safe.